Hi, I'm Vanessa Shaw, and this is the Horror Squad Podcast. Hello, welcome back to the Horror Squad Podcast, episode number 319. Tonight we're talking about 1995's Congo. I'm one of your co-host Todd. We have Steve. We are Joeless tonight because word on the street is that he doesn't want to show up for trivia because <laughs> it's so close and he doesn't like it. So shame him publicly if you see him. Absolutely. What's up, Steve? Not too much. You know, working on my move, so it's it's a pain in the ass. I mean, you can relate. Really, out of all people, it's just <laughs> it's just a lot of work. You know, packing yeah. and moving and yeah, to that kind and doing little touch up stuff I should have done myself, like while I lived here. You know, but now that I'm selling it. To, like I gotta get to it, so yeah. yeah just it's weird that how that works. Thing. Like you always have like a long list of shit. Oh, I gotta <laughs> patch this hole or right. trim this thing or whatever. Call it call a repair dude. <laughs> right. And then like, you know what you know what drives me the most crazy about selling a house is like all this shit you do for the next person that comes in, which mm-hmm. is like ridiculous. Like oh, uh, it's, especially <laughs> like when they do an inspection and like oh, uh, I don't like the garage door. It clicks. All right. So you gotta you gotta call like a garage door dude to come down and you essentially pay for their fixes, which is fucking stupid. I can understand if it's like a safety issue or something sure, like that. Sure. But like cosmetic stuff, like get the fuck out of here, you <laughs> fucker. Like I don't get it, but no, exactly. It's ridiculous. Yeah, what's up with you? Nothing really. I'm mean, kinda in the limbo between kid sports, so mm. I've been able to watch a lot of movies. Nice. And uh just hanging out and we're getting pretty good weather over here, so I'm getting ready to fire up the smoker, which we were talking about on Discord. If you want to be a member of our Discord, just hit one of us up, and we'll give you a link. It's, it's a lot of good times and good fun and everything. But yeah, my uh, I went to the store today, just looking at like pricing meats. And you you've had brisket; it's a fucking yeah. amazing. But of oh course. my god, have you seen how expensive brisket oh, is? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's why you buy it in a restaurant, not like the <laughs> full brisket, right? <laughs> Dude. I know it's ridiculous, but I'm like, that's like the the golden tier of smoking meats is brisket. Of course. And I was looking today, and the cheapest one was eighty six freaking dollars, man. Oh yeah. <laughs> for a fourteen pound brisket, and like, first of all, fourteen pounds is way too much. <laughs> and then, like, secondly, I definitely don't need to start on like an eighty six dollar piece of meat because if I fuck that up, I'm not right. gonna hear the end of it. <laughs> no, for sure. I mean, that, there's a reason we buy like three slices of it. That is funny. Yeah. That's not like. Yeah, that's nuts, dude. I, I guess I'll try Costco. They might be more affordable but fuck mm-hmm. dude 86 bucks for a piece of meat it's, right it's pretty stupid yeah. all right well we're gonna have a short show tonight we're only doing what watched and congo obviously we're not doing trivia and we uh joe's a little bit under the weather so we hope he gets better soon and uh what have you been watching steve not too much unfortunately because of uh the, the packing and stuff but i did get my you know two movies i do every week uh, the first one is actually a series that i did last year but there was one title in the series that I couldn't find anywhere in Canada. So I kind of left it off on my watch list on and on Letterboxd. And it finally fucking, uh, you know, got on a streaming service. So I finally watched it. And that is Anaconda's The Hunt for the Blood Orchid from 2004. That is Anaconda 2, uh, you know, as part of that series. You know, I did a Lake Placid slash Anaconda watch last year. And I was surprised at how good the series are like there aren't a ton of terrible titles in both those series so i was curious how this one would be especially coming off the the original and the story is pretty simple it this like pharmaceutical company who've discovered this um drug that can help extend people's lives but the problem is to get to make that drug you need a specific flower that grows in this jungle only once every seven years and uh, so they send a bunch of uh, people on an expedition to get that flower because that seven years is up in like two weeks. And that's what they do. You know, they go there, but they can't find any captains to bring them to that part of the jungle because it's monsoon season and no captain's crazy enough to do it. But of course, they find that crazy American that li- living in Thailand or whatever <laughs> that it's will do it for a American. price. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Or it's only always oh, American or an Englishman, one or the is, other, right? or an Australian. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, And that's exactly what it is. It's a former military dude and he does it for, you know, a bounty and he he brings the expedition there. But of course it doesn't go well. A, you have the monsoon, which is fucking shit up. And also you have a uh, multiple anacondas 
on their prowl and somehow keeping up with the ship <laughs> as it travels along the river up to this flower, which is the nest of the anacondas. And you can only imagine what goes on there. You know, this movie is way better than it should be, in my opinion. I had a lot of fun watching it. Sure, this the anaconda, does it look the best? No. 2004 uh, CGI, not exactly uh, state-of-the-art. It's about on par with the first Anaconda, if anyone has watched that. But it's got a simple story. It's got great characters. It's got a lot of action. And I, I quite frankly, enjoy the hell out of it. It's actually one of the best in the series, in my opinion. So if you like the Anaconda film, especially the first one, I think you'll you'll dig this one. So I think it's worth checking out. And actually, Anaconda and Lake Placid, that th both those series, I think, are more fun than you know they get the reputation for. So... That's Anaconda's The Hunt for the Blood Orchid 2004, which I watched over on Netflix, and I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 on Letterboxd. Are there any names in there, or is it just a bunch of um, it's, it's not anyone that I was I'm looking at to cast now. I don't know. There's not a single person. <laughs> it's like some faces you've seen before, but mm -hmm. you don't know their names, yeah, type of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, all right, my first one is from 1969, a Peter Cushing film called Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed. I watched this one on Blu-ray. It's currently streaming on demand, though, on Amazon. And essentially, it's a, a Hammer title, and Peter Cushing plays Dr. Frankenstein, and he goes over to freaking England, and he's up to his he's up to his old ways again. You know what I mean? Uh, he's trying to revive the dead. Blah blah blah. He has this doctor friend that both of them were shunned from the medical community for trying to, you know, uh, raise the dead again. So they're like kind of shunned, right? They're off to the side. No one wants to respect them. Turns out, though, that Peter Cushing's doctor friend figured out how to transfer a brain, a living brain into another body and have no ill effects, right? But then after he figures it out, he goes fucking crazy and gets put up in a mental asylum. So Peter Cushing's uh, whole stick is he has to get in that mental asylum somehow extracts the information to complete his Frankenstein's monster and, you know, perfect the fucking bringing the, the dead back from the, wait, bringing the a dead back alive. Does that make sense? I guess so. And, you know, a normal person would just be like, I'm a doctor. Let me use my doctoring to get into this mental asylum and pretend I'm going to help them out. No, he has to fucking blackmail this other young doctor. That's a psychiatrist. And then like his whole scheme is like get in there and capture him and all that stuff. But then it takes a weird, like a really weird turn that was not necessary. Peter Cushing end up, ends up raping the young doctor's wife. And I'm like, why do we have, have to have the scene? We already, like, we don't need this extra level of creepiness. And it's not like an implied rape where like he, you know, opens a door and he's like, get in there. He like, we see the scene play out and it's not as graphic as like, you know, Hills Have Eyes, stuff like that. But it's still like very, it's just a very strange thing in a 60s movie to see. And it, I don't know, it was just weird. Peter Cushing is very good in it. He's very creepy. The monster is actually like, just like usual, like you feel bad more for the monster than anybody. And overall, I thought it was a really fun film. Except that rape scene, man. Completely unnecessary and, and kind of took away from uh, my enjoyment of the film. So I give it a three and a half out of five. And that's available on Blu-ray or on the band on Amazon. Peter Cushing is just creepy, like, on his own. Uh, so perfect. Putting a situation like that is probably even worse. Yeah. I, I always see him as Grandma of Tarkin, though. There's, like, no... Oh, for sure. Yeah. Not saying it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so my second one this week is a 2024 film that I watched over on Shudder, and it's called Skeletons in the Closet. This one stars Terrence Howard, Cuba Gooding Jr., and Udo Kier, as well as v Valerie Ortiz. So this is a story of a couple played by Terrence Howard and Valerie Ortiz. And their uh, like 11 year old daughter had cancer, but then she was in remission. But all of a sudden they go to the hospital and the cancer is back. And unfortunately this time it's terminal. And uh, at the same time, uh, the dad played by Terrence Howard, he, uh, he loses his job and the insurance will no longer cover her treatment. So any chance that she has to survive this, they basically don't have the money to pay for it. Uh, out of desperation, he goes to a um, a loan shark that uh, Cuba Gooding Jr., who's his brother, told him to go to, and the loan shark says, "Okay, I'll give you twenty five thousand out of the fifty thousand you need. Uh, the only catch is you have thirty days to pay it back, and I want thirty percent extra on top of that. And if you don't deliver, I'll kill your family." 
So he he does it, and while he's trying to figure out how to get the other twenty five grand, the, uh, the that same crew from the loan shark go to his house and basically like remind him, you know, two days, two or three days later, this is serious. You gotta fucking pay me back. It's like a way to make basically intimidate him and his family to make sure that they pay up by the end of the 30 days while getting scared by that they decide they need to go another route and what they do at again cubic gooding jr's advice is to go to a psychic for some reason and see what she can do and the psychic reads the future uh, and then she sees that the daughter is going to die unless they go see another psychic played by udo kier who can maybe finagle some type of deal with a demon to get the daughter saved, which uh, he does. He's like, basically, yeah, I can save your daughter, but it's going to cost you dearly. And they're like, okay, we'll do anything. And it's a life for a life, but they don't really explain what that means. And then the rest of the story is like this paranormal fucking mumble jumble that uh, happens that really makes no sense. This movie has a way fucking better cast than it should. In fact, I think that these three actors owed money to a real loan shark and were forced into this movie because the movie is absolute garbage. The first half actually was pretty good. The stuff with the loan shark and the desperate like family just trying to save their daughter was actually a really interesting storyline. And then the second half is where they bring in the paranormal horror and the movie just completely lost me. It's it's just not good. It's overly complex. It's mostly CGI, but really like needless cgi like the fucking fire is cgi at one point in like a barn it's just it's so bad the whole loan shark thing just gets dropped out of nowhere like they just end that storyline without any real good resolution i don't know it, it feels like two different movies honestly and i don't say this often i wish it wasn't a horror film i wish it was just a drama thriller because i like that part of it but the horror was just so badly made that i don't understand what the fuck happened here but because I liked the first half, I still gave it a two out of five on Letterboxd. Uh, but it could have been a lot better had they just stayed the course. So that's Skeletons in the Closet 2024 film over on Shudder. Sounds awful. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't watch it. <laughs> I, I, haven't, I haven't heard Cuba Gooding Jr.'s name in quite a while. Like yeah, he, and... he was huge in uh, Pearl Harbor. And then I think he had some sexual misconduct. Right? He, had, I think he, was... he had something. I, I don't remember <laughs> if he was actually like convicted or anything but he got accused of some stuff and then yeah. you see him like in sp sparingly in movies here and there that like, st stuff on netflix that you're like huh never heard of that movie before you know kind of thing that's too bad he yeah good. he's a great actor i mean fucking yeah. early on when he played uh what a few good men and he played um what was the one where he's uh Jerry underwater oh yeah <laughs> Jerry McGuire. he was underwater he's a navy diver or something yeah that, that was a good one he was like a welder underwater right yeah yeah, yeah, that was, was a good. I don't remember what it is, movie. but that was a good uh, one for sure. It was good. Okay, so my next one, my last one here is a not a suggestion recommendation by Steve, but one I watched based on his uh, letterbox slash review, and it's Maggie 2015, starring Steve's favorite actor Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, so we're in like the middle of a zombie apocalypse, pretty much, and it's mostly resolved, kind of not. Like, there's not like a. It's not like a. A traditional post-apocalyptic setting people are more dealing with the zombies instead of like you get bit and you turn in you know a day or two whatever it is they take multiple weeks and it's like a slow turn so like you get to spend time with your family or whatever it is and then you're supposed to take the zombies to like a quarantine where they're obviously gonna fucking shoot them so yeah, arnold schwarzenegger's daughter is not with them in the beginning of the film like she goes to the city for a reason i don't remember because i kind of lost interest pretty early i uh, played by abigail breslin who's pretty damn good actress but she like calls arnold he goes picks her up at the hospital because she's been bitten right and he takes her back to their their little their farm uh, estate and basically he just gets to like live with her and kind of rekindle the relationship meanwhile she's hanging out with like other zombie kids and i'm pretty sure they have sex at one point which is weird but my like on paper this like is a really cool film with great actors in it but in execution, it's just like so boring and so melodramatic and nothing happens ever. And then the ending, while I think it's a cool ending, like it looks visually pretty dang cool how she offs herself. It's just like, I want Arnold, man. Arnold in a zombie movie? Like, please, you know? But this one, he's just a brooding, sad dad that just, just exists, you know? So do not recommend. It is currently streaming on Amazon Prime and Pluto in the U.S., Unfortunately, I bought the Blu-ray for like two bucks, so it's not that big of a deal. 
but that's Maggie from 2015, and I gave it a one and a half because it is painfully dull and just didn't work in a, in a film. It was just boring. Yeah, you're right. It's it's such a crime against humanity <laughs> that you get Arnold Schwarzenegger in a zombie movie, and this is what you deliver us, and then you hear that he did it for free because he liked the script so much. Like, God He's damn. smoking. <laughs> I know. Imagine Arnold just, like, cracking heads and smashing stuff. Zombies? It would be amazing. No, he's just crying in this one. It's like, dang it. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, absolutely. All right. That concludes what watched. I guess we're going to get in Congo now. Yep. All right. Congo from 1995, directed by Mr. Frank Marshall. The tagline, where you are the endangered species. I'm going to read off the back of the VHS because, man, this fucking description just hits and you'll see why. They've eluded heat-seeking missiles, gone eyeball to eyeball with them enraged 5,000-pound hippos, hacked through a jungle curtain. Still, the expedition continues. Amy, a gorilla who has part of a university learning experiment, is at last returning home. A professor, played by Dylan Walsh, electronics expert Laura Linney, guide Ernie Hudson, explorer Tim Curry, and other follow the scampering ape. They know she will lead them to the place that's more than her home. It's a site at the fabled lost city of Zinc or Zinge or something, and it's diamond mines. But what they don't know can be fatal. Once they enter, is it Zinge or Zinc? Do you remember what the freaking... No, town, no I, I couldn't decipher it with all the bad accents uh, trying to God. say the word in the movie. <laughs> what once they enter, we'll call it Z, they'll be the endangered species from the best selling uh, bestseller Michael Crichton. Eh. Yeah, based on a book by Michael Crichton, Jurassic Park fame. So Congo, man, uh, I have extremely fond memories of this film. It was always on TV when I was a kid. I think I might have seen it in the theaters. I would have been eight when this came out, so I'm not entirely sure, but I have distinct memories of watching it like a lot. It would always freak me out because uh, the apes are really uh, spooky looking and shit like that. But yeah, I have a lot of good memories. And basically what we have going on here is that there's a expedition to the Congo because this communications guru slash like worldwide fucking communications guy i don't know he has to do like a laser satellite thing with these fucking diamonds which makes no fucking sense to me if it i don't know and it's led by bruce campbell who's in it for five minutes and then i learned that he also um auditioned for the lead role which i'm super bummed out he didn't get because he got this 20 second pitch whatever so they're going there they link up with the satellite bruce campbell finds a diamond and he like uh, radios back to home base and he's like look at this diamond i found he puts it in a fucking laser rifle well definitely doesn't come into play later and he shoots it off right so they get all excited like we found it we found it it's on a volcano and shit like that and then the satellite feed goes blank and they can't contact him so flash forward a little bit the main girl is like was gonna marry Bruce Campbell's character, so she's like, "I need to go back and I need to f- go to the Congo and find what happened and everything." The boss of the company and the dad of Bruce Campbell's like, "I need you to get there because we need to have a leg up on the communications company around the world, AT and T. I don't know what it is." So eventually, they all go to the Congo. Ernie Hudson like gets him in the door with this stupid fucking accent. You got what's his face? Um, Tim Curry playing a Romanian dude that's supposed to be like uh anthropologist or not anthropologist um a guy that does good things for people what is that fucking called philanthropist there you go yeah uh that's his angle because we have a science crew that have they've been teaching language to this fucking ape through a speaking spell from the 90s kids out there if you never had a speaking spell it's fucking terrifying you put like you hit the letter a and it this robotic voice like goes a or whatever <laughs> so they want to take her back to the congo and they can't get back there because it costs money and then the romanian tim curry comes in he's like i'll pay for half of it and shit like that so i'll leave it at that i fucking love this movie this time around man it isn't it is not a good movie in the sense of good movie terms like it's not boogie nights or star wars good it's just fucking so ridiculous there's so much thrown in here it's like the mummy but not as good and i fucking loved it what'd you think about it Uh, So I have a similar history as you in terms of this movie. I'm pretty sure I saw it in theaters. Uh, I would have been 14, so it it makes more, I guess, sense. And I was a big fan of Crichton at the time. I'd read a few of his books and Jurassic Park, of course. And it did also play on TV a lot. And my dad had it on VHS as well. So uh, I remember watching it a lot, but it's been years since I had checked it out. And yeah, I think it holds up. You know, there's, there's a lot of fun in this movie and there's so fucking much in this movie man the amount of notes i took because there's so many crazy moments 
in the span of this film, you know, from uh, Amy the gorilla drinking martinis to jumping Hello, out of a plane. Steve. <laughs> yeah. Amy, Amy, like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hippo attack, there's snakes, there's jungle, there's anti aircraft guns. Right. <laughs> Civil like, war. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's so much. Yeah, there's a plot on the president. It's like a whole yeah. fucking sub story that just they keep glossing over. But there's so much to this movie, lasers, like it's just, it's a crazy fucking movie. But I wasn't bored like at all throughout the film because they constantly move. You know, there, there's always something going on. Uh, you know, they, they start with this gigantic crew of people that you know ain't going to make it to the end. You know, a bunch of, it's like the name people and then all these fucking red shirts that oh, are yeah. following them. You know, so uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a blast of a movie. Like Like you said, it's not a great movie. And there are a lot of flaws if you're really looking at it, but I respect it for for what they did, you know, and a lot of it practically, which, you know, if this movie had been made today, there's no fucking way they would have done it practically. Sure, the gorillas look creepy as shit in the movie, but it kind of adds to the charm that they look so creepy, in my opinion. So, yeah, it's a fun one. I agree. And were they there? dudes in suits the entire time right no animatronic yeah. work i don't think no, i don't think so no. oh, maybe, maybe the, the face is probably yeah. animatronic but yeah it's you could tell sometimes the way they move sometimes looks good but sometimes you're like yeah that's, that's a person <laughs> in a suit but <laughs> it's it still looks pretty decent you know yeah dude it, i mean i put down my first note here amy the gorilla hella creepy <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely Imagine, that, that's he, actually he, my third note that's uh, I, I wrote trying to build lasers Bruce Campbell's role too short, and then Amy is creepy because you had that first five minute scene of yeah. Bruce Campbell in it that uh, <laughs> the gorilla's not in. So, yeah, yeah. She, oh my god! Like he's sleep, like the scientist who that other scientist is like in every '90s movie. Yeah, I we, we did True like. Lies with him uh, recently yes. and, uh, on our other show, and then I feel like he was in Independence Day too. I might, I might be I thinking that wrong. I'm not sure. But I saw like, another. It's my third movie this year in 2024 that him? I watched with him. So. <laughs> Yeah, he's in a lot of stuff. I wonder what he's doing now, man. Like some of these nothing. Like... He's like a teacher yeah. or something. Yeah, I looked him up yeah. after we did the True Lies review on uh, our other show. So, dang, he's really yeah. good. He but yeah, I, I I wrote down Taco Bell sponsor because they like do a pan <laughs> yeah. shot of all the Taco Bell shit they're eating. I'm like, gosh. Right. And then Wolfenstein. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wolfenstein. Good time. Let's go, let's go to Ernie Hudson, man, because like, he, is he supposed to have an English or South African accent? I I don't know. Like, it didn't make I'm any not sense sure because it, it it moves in and out from New York accent to whatever else he's doing. You know, like with no rhyme or reason. It's uh, yeah. yeah. The other the other movie I'd seen that actor in is Dante's Peak, which I watched like oh, couple, okay. a yeah, few yeah. weeks ago as well. So yeah, he's yeah. good, man. He is. Ernie Hudson, like, regardless of his terrible accent, we don't need to have him have an accent. It, it doesn't okay. Play in the story. This is the same thing. Him and Tim Curry did not fucking need those <laughs> accents at all. I don't know who told them to do those accents. It was not needed whatsoever because they're like I love both those actors dearly. Yeah, they it was not fucking needed because they could not pull it off. Unfortunately, <laughs> and like Tim Curry's is so strange because it's it's like it's good bad. Or bad good, like he's yeah, like yeah. like he, at least his like is consistently the same thing. Unlike Ernie Hudson, where you right. can tell drops and stuff. And like when we saw like Johnny Rico doing his accents in other movies, uh, right, right. Like Matt Heidi, like comes Matt in Heidi, and out. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I I like you said, there's so much going on. Like when they get to Africa, a civil war like fucking happens, and there's like bo- there's soldiers shooting, killing each other. I'm like, yeah. what the fuck? And like <laughs> they get in a jeep and they leave, and then they get picked up by this warlord. And then he has the weirdest scene where they're like bribing him to let them go to like some other country. And he has this cake. And Tim Curry's eating the cake, the sesame cake, and he just screams at him. It is so fucking out. I don't know. I don't understand why. But he just screams at him. It's the funniest thing. Yeah. And he offered the cake. So yeah. there's, there's only three of them, you know. There's only <laughs> there's only Laura Linney, Ernie Hudson, and Tim Curry in this scene with the general. And he tells them, have some cake and some drinks. And then all, all of a sudden, he's just like not paying attention to Ernie as he's getting money, right? And all of a sudden, he looks at Tim Curry. He's like, "Are you eating my <laughs> my rice cake or sesame cake?" Sesame cake. <laughs> Stop <laughs> eating my sesame cake. Yeah, for no reason. And then he kicks him out of the room. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so I, like who like it, i don't know who Why? thought of that yeah. it's just yeah it was funny though. it's like a comedy like they wanted to do a comedy but it didn't sell so they had to throw in horror i don't know <laughs> right I, I wrote down a couple uh cool cameos you got james karen from return of the living dead who i don't remember what his character was i think he was like a scientist or a teacher or something and then echo from lost which is really cool i love that that character in lost he plays like a soldier in the background and then yeah uh, dude from Matrix, which I forgot oh, to yeah. look up his name. He, uh, I know you exactly. It's the guy with the funny looking shirts, right? Yeah, the he, dude he's that sells out steak. Morbius. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. In the first <laughs> I want to remember nothing. Nothing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Make me someone important, like an actor. Yeah, yeah. But, but he he's like he pops out randomly when like he's in one scene. He's like, "Hey, you coming with us now, nah, man?" And then they like literally like fly or something, and then he shows up at that location. I'm like, "How the fuck did he get there?" They're running through a, like a war zone, and he stayed behind makes zero sense but i wrote down here when uh amy first sees the blonde who is an attractive lady and she goes Mm. ugly woman (laughs) she's jealous you know (laughs) that's 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 her husband right there that she's uh, (laughs) they they even allude to it a few times so super weird man it is yeah it's yeah the the whole and I, i love how they give her a martini I heard banging the girl, <laughs> Amy. <laughs> you know, and just like drinking a martini on the plane, totally fucking casual. <laughs> Normal. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like eh, that's that's just what we do, you know. Um, yeah. They they didn't they didn't like gorillas are super strong, and yeah. they make it seem like they can just like carry her around like nothing, <laughs> which they right. jump out of planes with. Like, oh my god! <laughs> is she holding onto his body and snapping all his ribs? <laughs> yeah, basically, right. And I, I don't think I saw any harness. She, he's just holding her. Yeah, she's <laughs> like, holding him, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, so for, for you guys that haven't seen it, they're flying into this other country that's at Civil War now, and then they get shot down by fucking anti-aircraft guns. But they have like 30 minutes to get out of the plane that's crashing without pilots. So magically, they all have parachute gear, and they magically all know how to operate them. And then the, the lead doctor... Puts on a shoot, and then the fucking gorilla weighs what four hundred pounds at least. Yeah, at least, right? Bear hugs them, and they jump out of the plane. I kept thinking, I'm like, there's no fucking way in the Amazon or rain, wherever the fuck they are, you're not going to be lost instantly because they all take thirty minutes within each other to jump out of the plane. It makes zero sense. And when they lean out of the door and shoot flares at the rockets, I was just going to mention that. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I, I, I don't think a flare's heat is stronger than the fucking plane. <laughs> Going, you're not shooting you know. the fucking missile <laughs> you're just not doing it <laughs> yeah it, oh, it, God. yeah that, that was a weird moment there but i i guess what they're going for is that the fact that it's a heat-seeking missile it'll go after the flare before the plane they're just yeah. no fucking way <laughs> no way <laughs> yeah it was funny though and then tim curry he, he won't like jump off the plane he actually asked one of the guys <laughs> to fucking kick him off the plane <laughs> yeah harder <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I wrote down too. I th- I think Ernie Hudson said it. I'm your great white hunter, but I happen to be black. And he started mm-hmm. chuckling. Yeah, good, good good line. Yeah, he makes a good uh, a few good like racial observations throughout the movie. When at one point they find the other tribe that actually lives in the jungle, he says, uh, "Why are they laughing? It's because uh, I'm, you know, I'm the leader of a black. I'm the leader of this group, and they think a black man should have like things on his head and be carrying shit. Yeah, you know, it's like they're not used to seeing." Uh, black people have power over white people and it's the good like just observation of movies and things like that it's like times have changed and you know for the better it is and he you know he plays a good hero too he, he does. he's like a yeah. solid action hero in this like he root for him just, that, that accent's unforgivable it's just, yeah, it's, it's, accent. other than the accent yeah he's a, he's a great <laughs> fucking character that accent is, is whew, it's bad <laughs> yeah i wrote down leech dick um, oh of one... course with, with a cigar <laughs> and he had some cigar back to him yes. like <laughs> that's exactly what i know he gets a leech on his dick <laughs> and the ernie hudson's like here burn it off with a cigar and then he does it and then he hands the cigar back to ernie hudson yeah that's oh, what did man. you do like fucking like smoke it like what the he fuck should have smoked it that been so funny oh my god yeah <laughs> or should have handed it to like tim curry or something you know instead of smoking himself just like as he's passing by oh yeah yeah <laughs> which we learned that Tim Curry is looking for this land that has treasure in it. Mm-hmm. So he's not really like the greatest guy. He's not, I don't think he's a bad guy. He's not like murdering people or anything. I think he's one of those guys that just scams everyone, you know, mm-hmm. until he gets rich. 
So it's like he's always trying to figure out a way to get rich quick without actually doing the work. Because and we allude to that every time we go anywhere, people know who he is. That's true. I hate him already because he scammed so many people. So this is just another one of his get rich quick schemes, and he just happened to come and he doesn't actually have money, which we find out early in the movie. So he's supposed to fund this expedition. So he like pays for the plane, but he doesn't have enough for the fuel, which is such a weird like how do you rent a plane without the fuel? The kind of credit card? <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> An IOU. Let's go back to Amy though, because it's like a lot of stuff that's like just thrown away. Like they're developing a way to have people that can't speak speak through a computer, mm-hmm. but they're also teaching that to Amy because she might be able to tell them secrets about the animal kingdom. Is that right? right? Yeah, basically. It's so it's so dumb. <laughs> it is. It's a it's a weird plot. So, what is the point of Amy, though? Honestly, in this movie, is it just to rescue them at the end? Yeah, I, like he he's so close. So the the main guy, he's so close to Amy, but the second he notices that Amy drew like basically a jungle in his office, he's like, "All right, let's bring him back to the jungle." You know, like yeah, yeah. He's so <laughs> eager to kick her out of his of his place. It's kind of a weird relationship that those two have, you know, and, and he's so Very tight. Strange. He's so tight with her the whole time. But why is he so eager to let her go? Like I get the movie is trying to say, okay, he has such a big heart that he, that Amy needs to be in the jungle with like the real family, but they don't do a good job of conveying that. I'll opinion. say it. Do they have a sexual relationship? God, I hope not. <laughs> because it's, they're they, very close. <laughs> they're yes. And he's very like weird about it. He is it's, very weird it's, about it's it. It's not hidden too. It's not like something we're we're trying to dig to get. It's fucking very strange. Like there's an underlying sexual tension. <laughs> there <laughs> is, and it's, and it's weird. It's it very is. weird. Yeah, they're like sleeping next to each other in the same bed, and I don't know. It's it's weird, man. It's one you have to watch to understand. It's a lot yeah. of like visual cues <laughs> and the way they like. Yeah, it, it's just there's an odd relationship there. Yeah. And yeah, mm-hmm. you're right though. She calls the the hot blonde ugly woman because she's talking to her man. It's basically that's exactly what it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he seems to take her side too. Like it's not yeah. even like no, oh, no. She's she's hot. You know, no. It's like yeah. <laughs> yep. Weird. I'm just like thinking of her, Amy. They don't they don't need this plot at all. Like it's not needed in this film. She's basically because... a, a guide to the crystal, which wasn't needed. Like they could have found yeah. another way. You know. Yeah, well, I mean, they they found it essentially by tracking where Bruce Campbell went to, right? right? Mm-hmm. So it could have literally been about. They could have cut Amy, the doctor, uh, the scientist out, <laughs> yep. just been Ernie Hudson, Tim Curry, buddy cop movie. Exactly, with Laura Linney just going, you know, having her subplot and yeah, yeah she's just there right. for exhibition or something, or get Bruce Campbell back or something. Yeah, the whole gorilla story, you know, other than the fact that the villains are gorillas, but it's still they still don't need a good gorilla because it. it Amy doesn't really do much. They don't fight. Yeah, at one point, like when the action is really getting tough, Amy just like fucking leaves and just goes <laughs> to like join her family somehow, yeah. and then only comes back later <laughs> to the film. It's it's weird. It's a weird. It's situation. super strange. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, you forget her once the <laughs> apes actually arrive, and there's like that moment like they ripped off from aliens, where right. like they have the whole compound surrounded by guns and stuff. And then the gorillas are like running back and forth and getting shot at. I'm like, how many fucking I I'm watching dudes like aiming over other dudes' heads. I'm like, oh my oh, god. Damn. The the fucking <laughs> auto I wrote this note that the auto turrets do not look safe whatsoever. They are shooting all <laughs> over the place. No yeah. rhyme or reason. How are they even like deciding what is an ape and what is a person? Who the Seriously. fuck knows? Like I I figured it out. Just, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, it's don't just go like shooting all over. It. Yeah, exactly. It was it was a weird weird scene with lasers and shit like when did we get lasers other than that one laser gun which they're actually going to this place to which bruce campbell's body has still right exactly so So where are all these fucking lasers lasers coming from like what's powering that you know that's That's a powerful laser it's like destroying these gorillas as they come near it it's weird too because that whole battle it's like the scene from predator where they all start shooting into the fucking forest Mm -hmm. with that amount of ammunition that gets spent and like zero kills they're like oh i took the, right. took the bodies away they, yeah right they're shooting, like you said lasers fucking auto turrets from out of where do they have those where do they hide those things okay C- can we talk about like i know this is jumping a little ahead but it's kind of relevant to this conversation yes and 
they had a fucking hot air balloon too in like <laughs> they had basically three rafts with like one box in it but they had all yeah. these lasers and guns and fucking hot air balloon and like what the hell? That's, like, who's packing true. these things? Is it Mary Poppins on his expedition? <laughs> like, I don't understand. It, it's Santa's sack. Dude. He's just never ending. Yeah, I feel bad for like the dudes that they paid to carry all this shit. Then, yeah, no kidding. Poor bastards. It's, yeah, and I, I know that they get some stuff from like Bruce Campbell's expedition. They said there's about three hundred pounds worth of stuff, dude. One of those guns alone is probably like what eighty pounds to hundred pounds. Uh, so that's not that much equipment that he's probably carrying. So yeah, with all that ammo, like. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no, absolutely. And a hot air balloon again. Like I, the hot air balloon, the basket, and the fucking fire, yeah. like thing. You know, like I, I can I can okay. I can accept the balloon itself, like maybe collapsing it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can accept the fucking firing mechanism, but the basket. Yeah, yeah. Did they did they weave it? <laughs> right. The jungle. Yeah. I, I thought maybe it might be one of the crates is the basket. <laughs> it I just guess. opens up. I don't know. It's it's but on top of everything else that's in this movie, you know, they got food, they got water, they got fucking supplies, they got all sorts of shit. And but b- reality, based on what we've seen in this movie, they're shooting that fucking air balloon out of the sky. Oh, as yeah. as they see it. <laughs> the second, right? Yeah. <laughs> they shot like 19 missiles at the plane. Uh, I don't know I how many flare guns they that. have <laughs> on that on that balloon, but uh... they're just lasering fucking people from the balloon. Right. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Uh, like actually speaking of so they talk, mentioned the rafts I was just curious on a side note have you ever been in White River rafting I haven't no fucking terrifying Is it? <laughs> holy shit I, I went once and yeah probably never again it, it's really? terrifying dude. oh my god like I was watching the movie I'm like I don't know how these people are doing it with all that equipment on top of that and shit like that without life vests like it's yeah it's, like it's intense guns. Yeah, it's super have you ever intense. seen a uh, river runs through it or river yep. runs? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that's one of like pops into my head every year. I'm like, <laughs> I'm gonna watch that movie, and I never do. You really don't. Write it down. Yeah, they they find this like lost city essentially, and it has a bunch of like gray apes, which is like mm-hmm. dumb because like this whole time like base camp is looking at the footage of Bruce Campbell's expedition, and they're like, we found like we figured it out. It's an ape, but it's not any ape we've seen. I'm like, hey. it doesn't matter. <laughs> exactly it's just a different colored ape like basically gives a fuck <laughs> right <laughs> and they uh, go off this just off a shot of like the face you know yeah. just a, the, the face of an ape We're like nope that's not one we've seen before nope never seen it yeah <laughs> never heard of it <laughs> yeah they they have a the apes like attacking force and like tim curry gets his head smashed in it's pretty cool mm-hmm. all like the the guides are like shooting ak's off and getting destroyed by the apes which is actually a really fun scene i like it a lot and then we find bruce campbell's body man like in a little man. bone pit and i'm like man they spared no expense look... on that body <laughs> no it looks nothing like it uh, nothing it, it looks like you know like an, an attraction of yeah. like pretending to be someone you know it, like yeah it, it, it looked awful like we couldn't have bruce campbell come back and just seriously lay there. just lay there that's all <laughs> oh my god it looks so fucking bad <laughs> it's terrible his fucking laser guns chilling yep Thank God they put they drug it, you know the apes mindset like hey we gotta put the laser gun with the body let's they like, come on <laughs> and then fucking Amy comes back and starts calling the ape bad apes and stuff and they're like yeah. freaking out about it for some damn reason <laughs> it's just Amy's fucking dumb <laughs> yeah and, and, and I hate to criticize this movie for this but I I I couldn't help it uh, everything from the temple on was like they were on a bad sci-fi movie like set mm-hmm. it looks so much like a set. I didn't yeah. feel it like being looking real at all. You know, I don't know if they ran out of budget because you know their planes and martinis and all sorts of shit they and lasers. All that, that Bruce Campbell body, and probably. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> they did. Yeah, it just damn, it, it it looked bad in my opinion. Yeah, it's just like plastic plaster rocks and stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. You can tell it when it caves in. The rocks yeah. are like fucking just bouncing, like these like gigantic boulders. <laughs> you know, just like yeah, bouncing around like n- nobody's business. Yeah, it's it. Yeah. It didn't look great. <laughs> Yeah, so they they laser like all the fucking. Oh, we didn't even talk about the volcano erupting during no. this. Well, that's like right at the end, right? That's like <laughs> that's another aspect of this film. Right? They're like, hey, you know what? You know what this movie needs? A volcano. <laughs> a fucking volcano. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny because like it erupts during the battle, mm-hmm. and then the apes jump straight into it. Did you see that? Yep. Oh yeah. Why? Why were they and, jumping uh, into the lava? Into lava, yeah, constantly, right? Like I I yeah. think they showed a few shots of uh, like those holes that they come out of. Were exploding because of oh okay the volcano 
but some of them clearly just fucking jumped into that pit. They're cannonballing into the lava. Like, <laughs> yeah, basically, right? <laughs> yeah, and I, I noticed repeating shots of the exact same move over and over. It's like they only had so much budget to have the apes get into the lava, so it's like the same animation like four yeah. times, you know? Oh, actually, speaking of weird decisions of this movie, there's one scene where I thought it was like the mega ape, like the silver ape, but it turns out it's just they're all the same where he attacks for the first time the like the main group and it goes into this really awful slow motion that's like super blurry and I, I didn't understand at all what was going on it was it looks so fucking bad like why was it in slow motion like none of the rest of the movies in slow motion and it was all like super shaky was, and it's, it's was bad. that before before the it, it's um, right when the dude from true lies richard um, comes down he's like dying and oh. he, comes, he comes down the stairs and the ape kind of follows him from behind and when he attacks the group it just goes into this weird slow-mo and it, was, it looks so fucking bad come to think of it why didn't they have like a, a, a master ape that was like I, th- I thought that's what they were going for i thought the ape that was chasing him was like the master ape and the other ones were just minions but it turns right. out it was just one of the many fucking apes that huh. lived there that's lame it is yeah it should have been but- a master ape in my opinion you know, it'd be cooler too if if Amy wasn't as creepy, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the guy didn't have like a weird attraction to her. But mm-hmm. then they had Amy fight the master ape that didn't exist. Yeah, to the absolutely. death. That'd yeah. be fucking cool. That would have been way better. That that would yeah. have have Amy have some kind of purpose, right? That's Instead not of just fucking bad ape. <laughs> Get away. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a scene where the main dude from Nip Tuck is yeah. surrounded <laughs> by apes, wrong, right? Like yeah. yeah, he's like <laughs> surrounded by apes everywhere, and That's he's about to get killed. And then Amy just fucking like roars a little bit, walks right, right up to the thing, and basically like, uh, a- uh, "Gorilla's bad, gorilla's bad, <laughs> Amy good." And then yeah. they all like, "Okay, yeah, we're not touching that." They all yeah, like, off. Was, like what? Yeah, it, 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 it would have been if this movie had balls, dude. They would have like ripped her to shreds. Just oh like, my god, yeah, pulled no, her apart. No Imagine, <laughs> yeah, it been amazing. That, that been get crazy. away from my dad. <laughs> yeah. You know what was terrifying? I, I know I'm going back a little bit, and we don't see enough in movies, is a fucking hippo attack. Yeah. Hi- hippos are dangerous as shit. If you talk to people who are actually in Africa, hippos are like... Aren't they like you the don't, you don't killer of humans? Yeah. They, they're, but you never see them in movies. It's always fucking crocodiles or lions or things mm. like that. Hippos, they don't get the respect they're due. And this one, like, <laughs> man, they don't fuck around. They take out a lot of the boats, a lot of the guys. It, it, that was a good yeah. a, a good scene. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a there's a ton in this movie, man. And there's like you said earlier, like it it keeps progressing, and yeah. there's always like a different set piece, which I really appreciate. I think if it would have been like, part of me wants the apes to attack a little bit sooner. Yeah. But then we wouldn't get all this other wacky shit that we got martinis, ape skydiving. So I don't know. It makes sense the way it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. What else you got? I got I got one more about um the leader of like. What is that company called? Mm. It's telecommunications, and he yeah, has like some plot for diamonds to be the next level of telecommunication. Which, yeah, you know, something like that. Know. Yeah. But um, in the beginning, Laura Linney was like, "Bruce Campbell's your son. If you it, you're sending me on this mission to help him, right?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah." But I also need the diamonds. He's like, "All right." Mm. And then at the end, he's like, uh, "Bruce Campbell's dead." He's like, "Yeah, but what about the diamonds?" And she's right. like, "This motherfucker." So we know that he doesn't care about Bruce Campbell. Correct. He just wanted the diamond. Of course. It leaves you your favorite scene, hot air balloon. <laughs> Actually, there, there's something before that that made me laugh. <laughs> so she shoots the satellite with the fucking oh, like, gun from the <laughs> ground. She like aims it perfectly and in shoots space. down a satellite in space from the ground. With a laser. Like, oh, wow. That is some fucking laser. That's a fucking like mass killing weapon right there she has. And she... <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Zero sense, man. And you know having, that... uh, yeah, and also having just watched Dante's Peak, right, which stars that same dude, when the volcano explodes, they're like not that far away from it, obviously, you know, because they were right there, and they just kind of look at it like, oh, that's Ooh. that's unfortunate, <laughs> you know, like yeah. it's just no problem at all. They, it would have fucking destroyed them, killed everybody, being yeah. that close. Uh, nope, they're like, oh, my girl Amy is gonna be fine, living right next to this gigantic volcano that just exploded, and <laughs> in, in the whatever you call them the pack or something they just accept her right mm-hmm. and which yeah. 
Yeah, I which they didn't happens. at first. He he kind of like they kind of reject it right at first, uh-huh. but so then all so. all of a sudden, Amy is like with the pack, like sleeping around. Let me hang out. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's a yeah, the whole Amy thing. As much as I liked some of the Amy scenes because they were entertaining, it, like you said, it doesn't make sense in the story. It's just which, it, was like, their, it was their angle for people to watch this movie. Yeah, you know? that's true, and it's weird too. Like he wanted her to talk to gorillas to figure out gorilla stuff. And he didn't ask, like, hey, later, like, they just yeah. left. They just fucked off into their mm-hmm. hot balloon, which, <laughs> I don't know, man. That's such a good point. Like, where the fuck did they get this hot balloon from? Yeah, I I know that the dude from The Matrix had packed it because he specifically says, like, Do you, uh, I, got, I got the balloon and I got the... What is that fucking guy's name? But, but come on, come on. Like, the other, there's just no way. We we saw how, how big hot balloon weighs. How much? I don't know, but like they had three cases on those rafts, one per raft. The one ra- one raft didn't have one. I specifically looked <laughs> out for it. Jesus Christ! <laughs> so could this, but like, like without knowing, because okay. I don't know. Okay, okay, okay. Would it be able to support eight men and be on a raft, a fucking balloon raft, going down some rapids? No fucking way! <laughs> right. All right. So the average fucking hot air balloon. Weighs eight hundred pounds, hmm. and, yep. and then needs two gallon, uh, two thirty to forty gallons of fuel <laughs> to fucking get up there. Okay, we'll allow the hot air balloon. Sure, we're not allowing thirty to forty gallons <laughs> right? of fuel. Where do they have that? <laughs> uh, two and a half tons once and once I, inflated. I, so I don't Jeez. really understand. So you you have this expedition with like thirty people. Yeah. At what point are you like, you know what? We're probably going to need a hot air balloon that could hold three people on this <laughs> on this expedition. Worst let's case, take, let's take an eight hundred pound fucking balloon with all the fuel into the jungle for days, walking for days, <laughs> because we might need three three of us to evacuate at some point. That's true. And after getting shot down, automatic chain guns too. Bring those. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like someone. Oh my god. They should have just had a fucking semi truck at this point. It's fun, right? through the forest. God, I feel so bad that. for the dudes that were fucking carrying all this shit <laughs> with like no escape plan. Like so, yeah. it was destined from the beginning to, like you said, for three people to survive this. Yeah, basically, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a uh... oh boy. <laughs> yeah, so she shoots down that fucking uh, satellite, which she's mm-hmm. probably gonna go to jail for destroying company property when she gets back mm-hmm. and then uh yeah she gets the diamond and throws it into the fucking forest did you read the fun fact about that diamond no it was a real fucking diamond on loan and they lost it, <laughs> oh, she, really? threw it. <laughs> <laughs> she fucking chucks this real diamond <laughs> and they fucking they had to have insurance on it obviously but yeah they fucking lost it so some fucking bastard is gonna find that and not know that it's from 1995's congo <laughs> It's I do we should go on a quest to find that. Holy shit. Oh my god, yeah. That's that's hilarious. Where where did they film this? In in, in over in there. Africa? Yeah. Yeah. Pro- probably not in Congo, but probably not like in a civil war area, but Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> oh wow. man. This movie is just a movie that keeps on giving. <laughs> it's fucking it's amazing. It's yeah. so many layers to it. It is. Yeah, absolutely. Oh man. So uh before we uh, give our rating something that I'm going to start doing going forward just another reason for people to join our Discord is I was listening to some podcasts lately while I was working and when I hear people talk about reviews and stuff I'm always some- sometimes I'm like fuck I wish they talked about this specific part or I wish they brought up this point or this theory. So every week now going forward on Discord I'm going to ask our our listeners is there anything specific you want us to talk about? Oh, nice. For the review, whether it be a line of dialogue, a scene, a theory, just to make sure we cover like everything, you know. And we did get a few of them, but I did cover them in the you know space of the thing. But I just wanted to let everyone know this is something we're going to be doing. Another reason to join our Discord. If you're always like, "Fuck, why didn't they talk about this scene?" You know, why didn't they talk more about like the that. sesame cake or things <laughs> like that? You know, uh, then we'll de- we'll definitely mention it because you can't talk about the whole movie. You know, it's an hour forty something minutes. Uh, there's a lot there's especially a movie like this there's so much to it so uh, thank you everyone who sent in your uh, your comments uh, i did get one that I, i'm not sh- quite sure what he meant he says the end with the lava felt like a different movie altogether would this movie have been held in high regard if the whole movie was that way 
but I thought it was just as goofy as the rest of the movie. So yeah, you know, I I liked it. I think maybe he means like the action part of the the final mm. bit of yeah. the film. I don't know, dude. I I I mean, we'll give our rating shortly, mm. but I I liked where it got because, like I said, we wouldn't get all the weird shit that we were talking about for the majority of this film if mm-hmm. we were just like a straight maybe horror or straight action movie. We're like comedy action sci-fi horror also too is it a horror movie per se i mean it's a kind of a creature feature right there's attacking gorillas there's attacking hippos uh, and and yeah lasers uh, there's dead bodies uh and the gorillas are not like just regular gorillas they're like monster gorillas you know so i'd say yeah yeah they're silver no they're more yeah they're like yeah exactly these are silver gorillas (laughs) yeah I mean, I can, I can see it going both ways, but yeah, I, I agree too. There's enough horror here. Plus, like, their tone that they're going for was, yeah. was horror. Yeah, um, with comedy undertones, which <laughs> they attempted. Curry, dude. I would love to see an interview about this where he's not yeah. trying to sell the movie and he's just... Talking about his experience yeah, on Congo. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Yep. What, do you, what do you rate it, man? So, uh, you know, it's not a great movie. But I, it's to me, my rating is not often on how I think how good of a movie it is. It's how I feel about it, and I fucking love and love watching it. You know, uh, I have it on DVD. I'm thinking I should upgrade it to Blu-ray, and I'll probably watch it again someday. So I'm getting it a solid four out of five, uh, which is Very probably nice. more than it deserves. But I, I, I fucking genuinely had fun watching it, and it blew by. Like it's an hour forty six minutes from memory, and it was like, oh shit. The, because i remembered the parts and i'm like holy shit they're already at the city i think it's almost over it's like wow okay so four out of five I'm, i liked it a lot yeah i, I think i, I would have loved to send seen bruce campbell as a lead hero in this he yeah. just brings an energy oh my gosh missed opportunity from the filmmakers for this one he wouldn't have been as creepy with the the ape i think no he would have been <laughs> more of a sarcastic he, he just, uh, yeah, he like bruce, relationship yeah. yeah yeah which it sucks but it's cool seeing him it is at least he's um, in it right yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, I am a also very strong four out of five because nice. <laughs> while I, I, I agree with everything you said, if you wanted to rip it apart, absolutely rip it apart. No, but easy. it's such a fun movie, man. It's like, it's just a wild ride. And I had so much fun watching it by myself and I watched it via VHS tape. I think that kind of led to the, my enjoyment because VHS hides a lot of like <laughs> the, the shortcomings of films, especially like this with fucking lasers and shit. From the <laughs> right. Movies. But I imagine a group setting, this would be a fucking blast, man. Mm-hmm. Especially with the Amy shit. <laughs> yeah. The four out of five. Unfortunately, though, Letterbox does not agree with us. They rate it collectively at two point six out of five. So I'm wondering mm-hmm. where. Uh, where where did people go there? wrong? <laughs> it's, you know, come on! It's, it's, come on! It's so good. Bad ape. <laughs> <laughs> four, uh, four out of five. Steve's four out of five. We enjoyed it. Hopefully, we'll too. A streaming. Where's this one streaming at? It wasn't anywhere here. Uh, uh, I, I had it on DVD, thankfully, but it wasn't. I checked. Yeah, looks like via Letterbox it's not streaming here as well. So, bummer. But it's a, it's sure like a three dollar rental on Amazon yeah, or find it. You know, Xbox it's, or whatever. It's, it's worth buying. Yeah, absolutely. It's probably pretty cheap. I would hope. Unless yeah, it's one the... of those like rare fucking <laughs> movies there. No, I don't know. I did re- read a theory though that um, people like what's the What's that effect where you remember misremember something? Oh, uh, Mandela. You know? Yeah. So I guess a bunch of people remembered an ape getting a laser rifle and lasering other apes. But <laughs> that from another movie? Oh, no, really? In the Congo, like they. So like hmm. either everyone misremembered it because I remember that, or we just fucking simply wrong. But yeah, it's not on the VHS tape, so I don't know where else it would be because. And I got the DVD, and it's still not yeah. there either. So. I don't know, one of those things. And, and I have the international version. So, yeah. and, it's, and sometimes that makes a difference, you know, uh, like a swamp thing for people who know. If you know, you know. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. in other words, get the international edition if you get a chance yeah, get of more, swamp get thing. More nudity, dude. Yeah. All right. All right. Next week, it follows, which it is follows. Joe's pick. So, yes. I don't know why he picked it, but I think you and him don't like this movie, if I remember. Correct. And but it's one he felt should be watched again, maybe with fresh eyes or yeah, something because I, I, I like it a lot. So, yeah, um, I've but... heard that quite a bit that it's good. And I just when I watched it, hey, that happens, man. Like, it your does taste absolutely for whatever change. So happy to revisit that one because that one I remember not liking that much. And then everyone seems to like it. So I guess we'll see. Yeah, absolutely. 
So uh, that's it for this week. Thank you, everyone, for joining us as we reviewed Congo. So like we said, next week it follows. And just uh, join us on Discord. Like we said many times over this episode, all you have to do is ask any of us or the group itself or our podcast itself the link, and we will join that. It's absolutely free. Don't forget, we got a couple of events coming out this year. June 7th to 9th, we're going to Monroeville, Pennsylvania for Living Dead Weekend, where you get to hang out with all three of us. And you know, we get to go to the Dawn of the Dead Mall. I mean, how much... How much cooler does it get than that? So that's going to be awesome. And of course, we have uh, mid-October, I forget the exact dates, I think it's like 12 to 15, in Salem, Massachusetts, where we are hosting six cast members of Hocus Pocus with multiple events. Uh, There's a bunch of different ways to meet them and uh, get to hear from them and stuff like that, hang out with them. It's going to be all fun. So definitely check out our podcast for more news about that with the specifics of that event. And uh, we got some merch on uh, TeePublic. You can go there, uh, tpublic.com slash the Horror Squad podcast and get some t-shirts. It's actually one of the best ways to support us. We don't make much on them or anything like that. We just, it's cool to see people wearing our shirts like out and about. So uh, thank you everyone. And uh, we will see you next week. Goodbye. (laughs) Bye. (laughs)